Next on the agenda, uh, we've got uh, Professor Terry Donovan once again. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed you yesterday, Terry, talking about uh, evaluation of contemporary ceramic systems. In fact, somebody came up to me last night and said, that's the first lecture on ceramics I've stayed awake for in a long time. So, uh, and, and that speaks volumes, I feel. Um, we are very much looking forward to your next presentation, uh, which is on the diagnosis and management of dental erosion. Thank you for coming back. Well, thanks a lot, Ben. It's a, again a pl pleasure and honor to, to be able to speak to this society. A little different topic today. I'm going to talk about the prevention and management, or the diagnosis and management of dental erosion. And I really believe this is a, an incredibly important topic uh, because we, 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 we have an epidemic of dental erosion that, that's going on in America. This is part of a, a two-day lecture that I give on restoration of the worn dentition. Uh, and my goals are, number one, to increase uh, the awareness of the importance of erosion in patients with worn dentition. In, in America, when we see a worn dentition, we immediately think of bruxism and, uh, and occlusion, and really erosion is probably a bigger deal. Uh, I want to try to uh, emphasize the early signs of dental erosion so that we can intervene and prevent it from getting worse. And finally, I will give you a, a, a protocol to, to try to limit the progression of erosion once you've made uh, the, the, the diagnosis. Uh, this is a very important quote that uh, prosthodontists learn. It's from Muller Devan from back in the 1950s. But our goal should be the perpetual preservation of what remains rather than the meticulous uh, restoration of what is missing. And I think over here in Britain and in Europe, you guys are much more conservative than we've been in America. And I think your approach uh, is the correct approach rather than having to rebuild everybody back to some mis mystical ideal. As a profession, we've done a fabulous job with dental caries. Uh, through the magic of community water fluoridation, fluoride-containing toothpaste, patient educations on diet and hygiene, uh, we have eliminated dental caries from a significant percentage of our population. And as we heard yesterday, we still have some problems, but we've done a fabulous job at preventing caries. We've done a pretty good job at periodontal disease. Um, we know now, as we just saw in the pre preceding presentation, with regular maintenance, we can uh, d do wonders. Uh, our patient education and hygiene has worked pretty well. My patients all know they should floss. Very few of them do it on a regular basis, but at least they feel guilty uh, when, when they come in. Uh, we've dealt with smoking cessation as part of our profession. And, and we now know that serious periodontal disease really affects a, a relatively small segment of the population. And, and so we've done a great job with that. We've done nothing with dental erosion. And in my opinion, in North America at least, we have an epidemic of dental erosion. Uh, the profession is not really aware of the severity of erosion, and the, the patient population knows nothing. And I think we've got a huge job to try to tr transmit that, 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 uh, that knowledge. There are four groups of patients who are at risk for erosion. We all are aware of young women and eating disorders with bulimia. Uh, teenage males in North America are at severe risk for erosion. They're drinking gallons of soft drinks. They're drinking gallons of sports drinks and energy drinks. And, and if we don't get a hold of these young men and do something, they're going to all need full mouth reconstructions by the time they're 35 or 40. Middle-aged males are at risk for gastroesophageal reflux disease, and the elderly are at risk. And they're at risk for the same reason that they're at risk for root caries. They're on multiple medications for systemic conditions. Most of these medications are xerogenic. They have reduced salivary flow rates if they have good hygiene. If they have good oral hygiene, they get erosion. If they have poor oral hygiene, they get root caries. The good news for the elderly is that erosion is a relatively slow process, and most of them will, will be dead before it becomes a big issue. But, uh, but they are certainly at risk for erosion. This is a patient I treated when I was a graduate student at the University of Southern California. She was one of my so-called wear patients. I look at this slide today, and I can see ample evidence that this patient has a serious problem with erosion. I treated her, and this is some 21 years later, in those days, we did our own ceramics, so the ceramics isn't that great, but it survived for 21 years. 
the point that I want to make with this particular slide is that I've been in dentistry for 50 years now, and 98% of the patients that I've treated could not afford this reconstruction. This takes a couple of years of well-coordinated, uh, carefully planned interdisciplinary treatment involving endodontists, orthodontists, periodontists, uh, restorative dentists, and most of the patients that I see can't afford this. So my, my point is, with erosion, we have to treat it the same as we've treated caries and periodontal disease. We need to prevent it uh, rather than try to treat the long-term consequences of it. Uh, and in this regard, general practitioners are so critical. As a prosthodontist, I don't see patients until they're a mess. No one sends me a nice three-unit bridge to do. They send me a severely uh, damaged dentitions. And hopefully by the end of this morning, you can look at, at, the, at a cast like this and realize that this young lady's in trouble. This is a 23-year-old dental student. And there's signs here that I can see very plainly. In fact, she came to see one of my graduate students to get a, a ceramic onlay, and, 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 and I saw her this diagnostic cast, and I said, this girl's in trouble. She's got, she turns out she has gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, at 23 years of age, look at the cupping on these posterior teeth. And we were able to intervene, and it makes a difference. But if we can recognize that, we can prevent this patient from turning into this patient. So early preventive intervention